is the day of the Lord proper. Fantastic news of the hour. Watchman Campus Fellowship presents Hilltop Encounters 2020. Think, this is the day of the Lord proper. The Lord in question is the owner of the universe and he seems to have kept quiet over the affairs of men in time past. Now is the time he had ordained to bless all that align with him and deal ruthlessly with all who oppose him. This conference is for students and staff of higher institutions of learning and indeed lovers of the academia. Dates Friday 11th to Sunday 13 September 2020, time 9 a.m. daily. Visit hte.wccfonline.org for registration and information on viewing links or nearest coastal location to you. For further inquiries, contact 0806835193 or 0803852066. Please note that COVID-19 protocols will be strictly observed.
Welcome you to the systematic Bible study session. Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement Bible study session is a time of in-depth and expository study of God's written word, line by line, precept by precept, lifting up the hidden truths in God's word and having such truths planted on our hard soils. Now let's join our music team as we take some inspiration singing two songs. Number one is the song titled Just Obey. Just as God who reigns on high spoke to men in days gone by. So the Lord is calling men today. And my brother, this is true. Whatsoever he says to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey.
tell the song that is titled, Be Ye Doers of the Word. Be Ye Doers of the Word. Out of James 1.22 comes a call for juniors true. Who will live for Christ, the risen Lord, listen to this trumpet call, ringing out to one and all, be ye doers of the word. Out of James 1.22 comes a call for juniors true. Who will live for Christ the risen Lord? Listen to this trumpet's call, bring it unto one and all. Give you to us of the world. Be ye to us of the world. Be ye to us of the world. Be ye to us. now pray. Precious Father, we want to thank you because of the exhortation that's before us. Lord, I thank you because uh, Lord of heaven and earth, whose spirit is uh, hovering everywhere, willing to anoint the ears and the hearts of the people to receive the word and then to do the word, to understand the word, what they're hearing, and then be able to practice what they are hearing, so that we may be ready, precious Father, for the trumpet's call. Lord, I bless your name because I know that uh, prayer that we have made has already been answered. Whosoever that hear it, eternal rock of ages, enable such an individual to understand and then to act on what the person has understood. Blessed be God forever and ever. Blessed be Jesus Christ, and blessed be the Spirit of God. Thank you for answer to prayers, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.
Now we have born on the study of the book of Psalms. I've told you that it is a, a digression, a necessary one, because we need to address uh, some need. And that is the fact that God wants the people that are hearing all the wonderful things that he is uh, bringing across to us to understand and then to go on and to do what they have understood, to practice what they have understood. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, he said this. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15. He said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of the solution spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. He showed out the thing that, uh, instruction that uh, he wanted the people to keep, even the people that would be there, the people of Israel that would be there, even when these things uh, would begin to fulfill. And so he said, he that readeth, let him understand. He that heareth, let him understand. And as a result of understanding, now that person will now be able to practice what he has understood. Now, that is uh, a necessity altogether. When the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, dishing out those eschatological uh, things, now he urged them to understand, because if you don't understand, you cannot practice what you don't understand. When he was answering the question that he threw to him, concerning the fact that he was talking to them in parables, teaching on the sowing of the seed of the word. Now he has this to say also to the people. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I unto them in parables, because they see and see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. They see, but they, they refuse to see. They hear, but they refuse to hear. And as a result, they don't understand. And as a result of the fact that even which they appear to have understood, the little that they have gotten is taken away. Because the principle, the rule of the Lord is you hear, you accept, you understand, you practice, more is given unto you. But you hear, and you don't bother. You shrug your shoulders. You don't want to understand. And you didn't do anything, even that much that appears to have entered into your life or into your heart, will be taken away. And then he began to explain the a parable. And after explaining the parable to them, he made a statement and said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So it becomes very necessary that we should visit this issue of hearing and understanding. Over this period, the Lord has been bringing across to us many, many pieces of information, salient information. And then they are not meant to be just good talk. They are meant that we should listen to them, understand them. You have been told that God said, fear not. Then the question is, who is uh, abiding by that? Who is abiding by that? And then you have been told that uh, the pandemic is a taunting instrument at the hand of God. The past taunting instruments at the hand of God and the present taunting instrument at the hand of God. 
How that God taunted Satan when Jesus Christ rose from the dead because uh, Satan is the one that brought death. And then the resurrection of Jesus Christ was a taunting instrument unto Satan. And then we saw that this coronavirus is a taunting instrument unto the gods that want to have some rivalry with the almighty God. You have been told that God is a jealous God and he hates rivalry. And he is taunting all the gods of uh, merriment, all the gods of the beach going, the gods of football, the gods of uh, music, all the things and uh, business running up and down. Then, but we are told that at the end of the day, he will taunt coronavirus. He will put it out of the way. And then we also been told that uh, after this uh, incident, now we will now need to put in the sickle because he will have prepared the world ready for harvest. Now, you hear, you need to understand, and you need to take in what you are hearing. Now, remember that the Lord is in the business of making up his jewels. In the business of making up his jewels, we have the 17-point leap declaration from the Lord, which we have gone through. He says in the lip declaration, just a little of what we have in the lip declaration, I want to rehearse to your hearing. He said, this is the time that God wants to show that every line of scripture is true to the letter and that every line of scripture works wonders. Now you hear. You must hear, you must understand, and you must uh, take advantage of what you are hearing. Now he's saying that this is the time that the confused about Christianity, what true Christianity is, should be clarified. Because God is going to bring out messages and their teachings that have to clarify the day and then let every person know who is a Christian and who is not a Christian. Now we hear from him, even during the leap declaration, how that he wants to do something in the lives of the people, the married people, who have gotten into circumstances that are very, very sorrowful. Marriages have rather mad people instead of making them. And he wants to recover the situation. He wants to recover the situation. He wants to, he wants to heal the sick. He wants to bring in again the truth about regeneration, salvation, and sanctification. We want to bring it in again. Now, as we are hearing all the things that we are hearing, even through the charismatic hour period, the charismatic hour period that says, who said it? Are you benefiting from it? Are you practicing it? Are you, are you acting on the basis of what you hear? The charismatic hour that said, who said it? And the one that is telling us what God can do. Now, this is the day that every person that is hearing must uh, endeavor to understand and then go practicing what the person has understood. The Lord has begun the fulfillment of his threefold end time project. What is his threefold end time project? Number one is raising a great army of Christians from among the various denominations. The army that is equipped with the believer's spiritual armor for defense and offensive. And then an army that is enriched with the believer's virtues that make for impeccable Christian life. What is the purpose? The purpose is to bring about a great harvest of souls into the kingdom of God. Now, second point is bringing about a great harvest of souls proper and then a great revival in the entire church. And then the third aspect of that uh, threefold end time program or project of the Lord is fulfilling what he has termed the pre rapture necessity. And I read from Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, let's see what he calls a pre-rapture necessity. Ephesians chapter 4, reading verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 11. 
And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, maturity of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith. Listen to me. Till we come in the unity of the faith, the apostle was not joking. He was talking by the Spirit of God that he had going to be unity of the faith. You ask me, so all these discordant tones, all these 10,000 opinions on each and every given matter in Christianity, you mean to say that God's going to uh, provide a situation or will work out a situation where they will speak one voice? Yes, because there are those that are looking for truth. They are there. Meanwhile, they strayed into error, but they want the truth. And then when the truth begins to fall out, they will say, this is the truth. They will identify it, and then they will key into it. And it doesn't mean that they will become one denomination. No. Will not become one denomination. The Lord gave unto us the International Gospel Ministers Conference of the Hour. And that International Gospel Ministers Conference of the Hour is an instrument of achieving this thing that he has said. The ministers come from all over the world and they hear the truth. Now, those that are willing and those that are looking for the truth of God's word, they will hear it and the spirit of truth that is in the people we now make them accept the truth. And they go back to the places and they are doing the same thing. Listen to me, when it comes to the matter of regeneration, the person there is teaching regeneration as it is, uh, as Jesus Christ taught it and uh, enforcing it. And then people are getting regenerated, people are getting sanctified, people are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, and in that other place, the same thing is happening. Now oneness has been achieved in that regard. No, because there are people that are not children of God, they are not ministers of the gospel, but they wear the clothing of ministers, they are wolves in sheep's clothing, and anointed through some pseudo-religious spirit, and they are engaged in various things. And these ones will not come into this, uh, this assembly of uh, Oneness. They will not come into it because they are not doing the master's bidding originally. They were not um, elected by the master. They call themselves, some men call them, and some of them were called by feed the looker, and some were ordained through sin and um, through some pseudo religious spirit. So, those other people, they are not the people we are talking about in this oneness. Come back to where we are reading in verse 13 again, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You have been told that God will want the fullness of Christ, a substantial measure of the fullness of Christ, to be in the church of the rapture. That's that substantial measure of the fullness of Christ. Remember that in the gospel according to St. John in chapter 1 and verse 16, he says, of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace, item for item, virtue for virtue, of his fullness, fullness of the Holy Spirit, substantial measure received from Christ, fullness of humility, fullness of love, fullness of compassion, fullness of awareness, fullness of insight. This is what the Bible has said, and this is what is being scheduled. This is the arrangement that God is into right now of his fullness we have received. And then the apostle says here, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature, of the fullness of Christ. And then in chapter 5 of the same Ephesians, we have this information. In verse 25, husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. For what purpose? That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot, not 
having wrinkle or any sort of but that he should be holy and without blame. That is the church that the Lord is coming for. That is the church for the rapture. And it's in the business already. It's already in the business and then all the activities that he will undertake will culminate in a glorious church ready for the trumpet sound. In uh, Isaiah chapter 49, verses 5 and 6, which is the bedrock of what we are doing. Isaiah chapter 49, 5 and 6, and now said the Lord that formed me from the womb to be a servant to bring Jacob again to him. Bring Jacob again to him, the straying children of God. Bring them back unto God again. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It's a light in that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. This is what the Lord is already doing. And remember the 17 point leap declaration. And uh, you go over it and again and again. And then follow through in the thing that he is dishing out unto us at this time around, whether it is through the Bible study session or whether it is through the charismatic hour session or through the Sunday light session and on and on so that you can fit into the squad, fit into the church that is uh, going to be raptured because uh, this is... Uh, what he is already engaging himself in doing. Now, the point is that you hear the mechanisms, you listen to the instrument that God wants to use to make up his jewels. Now, you need to understand. You need to understand. The reason for the need to understand is as follows. It is that if you don't understand you will not be able to practice what you didn't understand. You will not be able to benefit from what you didn't understand. Listen to me. Those of you that go to university, that have gone to university or gone to colleges of technology or whatever, now you know that the course you are reading, say accountancy, say mechanical engineering, has a curriculum. And then... You come to class and they're teaching you from year one to year two to year three to year four to year five or year three as the case may be. And then you are going through the course content item by item. And you are expected to understand all those things that you are being taught. You are expected to understand them. You are expected to understand them in such a way that at the end of the day, you will be able to write a dissertation on the thing that you have understood. If you didn't understand those things, you cannot practice those things when you come back. If you went to read law, but you did not understand anything, you will not be able to be a lawyer. If you went to read the building construction, and then you did not understand anything, you will not be able to raise a building, you will not be able to develop a site. So then, there is need for you to understand all the things that the Lord is saying, all the material that he is given, all the word that he is giving to us, all the preparatory things, all those are things that are building up the jewels, making up the jewels. All those things that he wants to use, he's saying and doing in order to make up the rapturable church. You need to understand those things. Now, once more, in Hebrew chapter 11, we have an aspect of uh, what the Lord is engaging in doing. Hebrew chapter 11, and we are reading verse 12. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 12. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. This is the project of God. Through an instrument, through an instrument, God has decided to do what? To raise up 
Multitudes of people, multitudes of people like the stars in the sky in number, and like the sun by the seashore innumerable. Multitudes of sinners, no. Multitudes of saints. Multitudes of people that are having their names written in the book of life. Multitudes of people that have the earnest of the spirit of Christ inside them. Multitudes of people that are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Multitudes of people that are living right. Multitudes of people that love the Lord. Multitudes of people that love his word. Multitudes of people that love his house. Multitudes of people that love his work. That is what the Lord is doing. And uh, at the end of it, now, those multitudes of people will be called whom through the trumpet of the archangel, as we have in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The Lord says, he that readeth, he that heareth, let him understand. So the question is, do you endeavor to understand? Do you endeavor to understand and to practice and to put into practice what you are understanding? Or are you hearing those things, all these messages for hearing sake? And then they are not meaning anything. If anybody is there and he has not been born again, can we say that he didn't hear the things that could lead the person into the experience of being born again so far? Is anybody there and it has not had any insight into the ability of God, into the authenticity, into the power in the word of God, and the person is not benefiting from it? Now, can the person say that you are not benefiting because uh, uh, the thing is not true? If you are not benefiting, it's because uh, you didn't understand and you didn't bother to understand. If somebody is there and is hearing all the things that are being shown out and he has not developed faith in God enough to be saved, enough to be healed, enough to knock out the mesmerization and the maneuvers of the wicked one, where the person says that... Uh, there is no balm in Gilead, the person will not be able to claim that there is no balm in Gilead. The person is suffering just because he didn't recognize the balm in Gilead and did not take advantage of the balm in Gilead. It will be the person's fault altogether. So the bottom line is you hear and understand. More and more things are in the making. More and more ways are coming. The Lord is the one that is interested in ensuring that every line of scripture is true to the letter. And now, and I've begun to know it personally, that every line of scripture is, is true to the letter. Which means, if you understand it, if your eyes of understanding are opened unto the truth that is being dished out, you'll be able to take hold of any line of scripture to your advantage. And it will surely work because God is the one that says it will work. This is the time to prove to the world that he has not seeded the world to Satan and cannot see the world to Satan. And he has not seeded the church to Satan and cannot see the church to Satan. Remember that Jesus Christ said upon the truth that I am Christ, the son of the living God, that I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, all the things that we have heard, I am asking, what impact have they made? What benefit have you received from the things that they have even so far? All the things you had on Psalm 1, what impact did those things make in your life? And then the charismatic hour periods and the Sunday light periods that we have had so far. Now, I say finally unto each and every one of us, seek to understand. Hear and endeavor to understand. I go to those scriptures again in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. 
Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And I read verse 11. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them is not given. Why is it not given? Why did he elect the, the difficult way? He elected the difficult way so that even the little that they have will be taken out from them through that. Because the rule is, whoso hath to him will be added. And whoso does not have, that did not bother to have, from him will be taken even the more that he had. That is the rule. He now quoted what the prophet Isaiah had said in verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah's. We say it, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is worse gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should hear them. Their ears and eyes worse gross. Listen to me. In the... Old Testament, one of the Old Testament books, it talked about Jeshurun. When they grew, when they grew, they was fat, and then their minds were blocked, and they kicked. Israel kicked. Now we have uh, such people in the church again, this time around. The people that have been there for a very long time, ministers of the gospel, leaders of the people that have become grown, they are now become they are now put on weight, weight in the mind and weight in the body. They are, their bellies have protruded and now their hearts have been saturated with God knows what. And as a result, their hearts are blocked and then they cannot hear. Whatever you say, prayer, they don't pray. They will, shrug, they will just listen to those things and then and rise up and go and eat and drink. That is what we're having in the lives of people that are called ministers this time around. And that is what he's saying. They have become dull. In, they have become dull. They have waxing gross because of passage of time. May I inform you, passage of time can make you to lose interest. Passage of time can remove the spirit of God that is inside you. Passage of time can make you to not to know anything again. The things that used to be very glorious and very sweet to you. Passage of time can make them not to mean anything anymore. Is that not the case with some people and many people in the house of the Lord? And that's because over the period, there came a time when they would not hear anymore and understand. There came a time when they will no more hear and understand and uh, act appropriately. Let me ask you, when last did you seek to understand and to act on the something that was spoken as you went to church? As you listened to a message, as you listened to an exhortation like this, when last did you seek to understand? Newcomer, the person that has not been born again, is it because that there is no mechanism for being born again? Nothing that you are asking is a big deal. Nothing is a big deal as far as God is concerned. God is able, has the ability to do all. Everything that you are asking is not any big deal before the Lord. And if you have not received, the fault is not from the Lord, the fault is yours. Be warned. We are in the last day. In the last day of sin, in the last day of sin, in the last day when nothing is uh, uh, interesting other than sin, in the last day when they are posting nothing into the internet other than things that will yield sin, that will pollute the world. In the last day when if it is not news concerning man and woman, it is not news. That's the day we are into. And now that day has rubbished many people, many ministers. That day has rubbished many brethren. That day has rubbished the people that have been rubbished before. He has made them drunk with sin. That is the last day. Of course, that is what the Bible says. 
that in the latter days, very lost times shall come, and they will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's where we are today. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's where we are today. Now, and in that same period, in that same day, is at the time of preparing the people for the rapture. That is it. While the enemy is preparing his people for damnation, now the Lord is preparing his people for the rapture. May I inform you of the revelation knowledge that I have from him? He said, right now, the one third of the angels of God that rebelled alongside Satan have been mobilized by Satan and they are ferociously pursuing the sons of men. They are in their business night and day. Remember that they are not human beings. Remember that they don't get sick. Although you, you can give them leprosy. There is spiritual leprosy that you can give to Satan and can give to an angel. That's the truth, but that's not uh, what we want to talk about right now. That's uh, a matter for another day. But meanwhile, I'm wanting to inform you that they are ferociously wanting to amass the models of people for damnation. But the Lord said that he has two thoughts of his angels that are lawyer. And now he has also angels in this earth, human angels, whom he's gathering together in order to be able to do his own work and bring multitudes of people into the kingdom of God. May I ask you, what is that thing that is impossible? God would have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. You are not begging him. We are not begging him to save people. We are not begging him to heal people. It is in his uh, power and it is in his mind to heal and to, and to do everything that is good for the sons of men because Jesus had died. May I inform you of something that is coming, and that is how that God is under obligation. The apostle said, necessity is laid upon me. If the apostle said, necessity is laid upon me, I do not have an option. I need to preach the gospel. Necessity was laid upon him. Why was it a necessity? Why would he not have any chance to say otherwise or to do otherwise? And if he did not have any chance to do otherwise, now God does not have any chance to do otherwise than what he said he will do. Necessity is laid upon God too. Now this is the time for preparation. This is the time to boost you. This is the time to impart, to enrich the believers with uh, the spiritual armor for defensive, for defense and offensive. And then be, be, enrich them with uh, believers um, uh, uh, qualities that make for impeccable life, making them prepare for the rapture. Bottom line, hear and endeavor to understand and act on what you have understood. Take advantage of everything that you have understood, that you may be among the elect, among the Jews, among the people that will be taken out from this world in a short while. It's time to consider the exhortation and to bow down your head to pray to the Lord and to say, Lord, uh, from now on, I cannot hear like a deaf person. I cannot hear. I cannot, I cannot just be like uh, somebody that is uh, observing but is not interested. Is just there for being there. I cannot be like that again. Whatsoever that I hear, the Lord is saying, I will take advantage, I will endeavor to understand and will take advantage of what I'm understanding in order to build myself into the rapturable church. Let's pray as we sing the song that says, Be doers of the world. Bring it. 
eternal Father, I thank you because of such a time that we have had. I bless your holy name. You know each and every person that is out there. And I thank you because as they respond to your word, now God will respond to them that respond unto him. Because your rule is clear. He that honoreth me, I will honor. Thank you very much for answer to prayers. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. Amen. Let the people say amen everywhere. Amen. Be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. And not serious, not serious only. Be doers of the word. This is the day of the Lord proper. Fantastic news of the hour. Watchman Campus Fellowship presents Hilt Up Encounters 2020. Theme, this is the day of the Lord proper. The Lord in question is the owner of the universe and he seems to have kept quiet over the affairs of men in time past. Now is the time he had ordained to bless all that align with him and deal ruthlessly with all who oppose him. This conference is for students and staff of higher institutions of learning and indeed lovers of the academia. Dates Friday 11th to Sunday 13th September 2020, time 9am daily. Visit hte.wccconline.org for registration and information on viewing links or nearest postal location to you. For further inquiries, contact 0806835193 or 0803852066. Please note that COVID-19 protocols will be strictly observed.